Hey everybody. I thought I would go around the farm today and see if you guys can determine who the friendliest animal on our farm is. And I'm filling up swimming pools, so I thought I would start with cantaloupe. Cantaloupe is our oldest goose here on the farm. He's approximately 11 years old, and he's a Sebastopol. Now, Sebastopols are a very friendly breed of goose. That's just in their personality to be more friendly. And he is a male. Well, he's beautiful. I'm not able to, to touch him and love on him. So I think it's going to be a given that it's not cantaloupe. And since I'm over here, I just so happened to see some Muscovy ducks. And they're dirtying up the chicken's water as normal. And these are, well, this is actually a male and a female. But the male here, he's one of our oldest Muscovy ducks here. He walked away from me. He's not going to let me pet him, nor will he sit in my lap. I'm standing outside the pigeon aviary, and you can see the two Victorian crown pigeons are sitting up here on a perch. I think you all know that they're not going to let me love on them, and they're just, they're just not not that kind of animal, but they are beautiful. Now this guy right here, he's an Egyptian goose and he has something called angel wing. And he had that when we, when we first got him. But he's, he's a goose that Jason, he doesn't care too much for because he's very loud. And as I'm walking towards him, you can see he's walking away from me. Now, there's a little secret I want to share with you. So here's the secret I was telling you about. We, uh, we went on vacation. Do you hear her? We went on vacation and we came back and we found the female Egyptian goose sitting on a clutch of eggs. So, since they were already developing, there was nothing we could do about it but have, let's see, 19 more Egyptians. She got up as soon as I came in here, but I had to show you guys. Alrighty, so here I am. This is Scott, our peacock. Now, Scott is... He's just about as friendly a peacock as you're going to get. Now, some may argue with this and say, well, so-and-so has a peacock that, that's, that's much friendlier than Scott. But in our experience with peacocks, and we've had quite a few, Scott is one... <coughs> He likes me talking about him. Scott is one of the friendliest that we've ever had. Now, when he displays his beautiful tail, I can walk up behind him and literally touch his feathers, go around in the front of him, take pictures of him. He's just a friendly creature, and I think it's because he's been with us since he hatched out of the egg. I have entered the goat area, and this is also where Mildred and Peaches live. So, Peaches is getting ready for bed, but we're gonna go over and tell her good night. And I've got a cow that just came in. I bet you I can't figure out who that is. But Peaches, she's really sweet. Peaches is a pot belly pig, and she's been with us for a little over eight years now. We got her when she was just a baby at about eight weeks old. And of course, yeah, she wasn't nearly as big as what she is now, but she grew into a big boss lady and she's just, she's so sweet. Now she holds her ground here. She doesn't let anybody run over her and she lets you know that she is the boss lady. Right, Mildred? I'm in this tiny porta hut and this cow 
named Mildred has came in here <laughs> just to visit. So Mildred, let's back out, baby, and we'll talk about you, okay? I know you wanna let everybody know how you came about. All right, so here's Mildred. And if y'all have been following us for much time, you know that Mildred came to us as a rescue. Mildred is a Cheryl Angus cross. She, uh, she was bottle fed by me. She came from a farmer that could not take her because he was unable to, to bottle feed her. Her mama, her mama left her and he had no way to bottle feed her. So he actually dropped her over the fence at a neighbor's house and the neighbor bottle fed her before I got her but she really didn't need another cow. Now who's to say I needed a cow either, but it just worked out because I don't think there's a sweeter cow on the planet than Mildred. Mildred right now, up to this point, is the friendliest animal on the farm. Now let's see if that's gonna continue. All right, so here is Tip. And Tip is a Nigerian dwarf weathered goat. And what that means is he has been fixed so that he could not breed with other goats. And Tip was our, Tip was our first Nigerian dwarf. He, um, he, was, he was bottle fed by us. He lived in our house for quite some time. Mary Carl was little and it just was incredible having a goat live in our house bottle feeding it so um we we have enjoyed tip he is a very sweet animal to us however he kind of rules the roost when it comes to the goat girls and while he can't breed with them he does still show his dominance at a few months later we got bootsy and one reason we had tip weathered was because we knew we were getting a female and that is Bootsy. Bootsy was bottle fed as well, but by the time she came along, Tip had moved outside. Okay, so I have other goats here. This is Paris. Paris was born here on our farm last year. Um, Paris's mom is Fifi, who's a Nubian. Her dad is Joe, who is also a Nubian, registered buck. Uh, this is Capri. Capri is a Nubian who is due to have, I think, multiple babies in the month of June. Now, they're friendly, but they were not bottle fed. They were, they nursed off of their mom. They're just not in your pocket like Tip and Bootsy are. Right, Tip? Okay, so here's our newest addition. And this is little Mo. Now, Mo's still getting adjusted to things, but Mo came from Sneed's Farmhouse Sanctuary in Coleman, Alabama. And Miss Judy has ch school age children and adults that come to her farm and love on her animals every single day. And that made Mo the sweetest goat ever now at this age i would say that tip and bootsy were were just as friendly but um mo's running a he's running a close race for that tie and he was not bottle fed so i guess mildred you still win because the whole time i've been in here talking about goats you have followed me and licked me and made sure my hair was all in place. And I just, I mean, you just, you're the winner. You're the winner in here. I'm not finished yet, but you're the winner out of this pen. Okay? How's that make you feel? Uh-oh, she's not happy. And I came and walked out of the gate. And when I did, Mo followed me out. But that's okay because he's not going anywhere. I don't mind if he comes out. He's just going to walk around and eat some of the grass. Come on, buddy. All right, y'all. We're, uh, 
We're now going into the emu, and his name is Nugget. Now, Nugget, we brought home when he was just a little thing. I saw a Craigslist notification of emu chicks available. We had talked about getting an emu, but we're just the kind of people that are never ready. It's either, you know, we plan as much as we can, but we either get it or we never will. So when I saw the listing for the emu chick, chicks, I'm sorry, I immediately called them because it said Auburn. Well, we're in Alabama and Auburn's in Alabama. So when I called them, they told me that they had two left and um, they would bring both of them and let me choose. And so they gave me their address. And at this time I realized after setting up that we would meet them, that that Auburn had a comma with a GA after it. You know what, Georgia? Georgia is a little bit of a ways from Alabama. So it wasn't Auburn, Alabama, it was Auburn, Georgia. But that's okay, I already had Jason talked into it. I mean, Carl was excited. So off to Georgia we go. We stayed in a hotel because it was quite the drive. And while staying in that hotel, I got a text from the lady that was selling the emu chicks. And she told me that she realized who we were and that we had Coghill Farm and that she had a, another emu chick that she wanted to offer me that they were gonna keep, but they really didn't need to keep it. She met us at the hotel the next morning and she brought not, not one emu chick, not two emu chicks, but she brought three emu chicks with her. Uh, at this time, I'm thinking to myself, we had a hard time deciding if we were going to get one. And now I have a decision to make. Do I get the one that's really sweet? Or do I get all three and just make my life a complicated mess? So my wheels started turning and I reached out to some friends of ours who lived in Shorter, Alabama, which was on our way home. Uh, Mr. Stan and Miss Kathy had mentioned to us that they would like to have an emu at some point. Their grandson actually wanted one. And they did take the other two emu chicks. Goldie and Pepita are their names. So, um, at least I know where they are and I get to follow them. But this guy, he's got to be in the top two. Right behind Mildred as for the friendliest animal on our farm. So while I was standing here talking about Nugget, telling you guys the story, here's Big C back here. Now Big C came to live on our farm from a baby gosling. He came from the feed store in 2020. Big C has an abbreviation and I bet you all can figure out what it was from because he's a 2020 baby. So Big C has a wife here and he's just trying to make sure that I don't get too close to her. Now, if I ran from him, he's going to chase me and he's going to try to bite me. But I have learned that if you go towards one and do not show any fear, he's hissing at me, but he's backing up. I'm showing no fear and he's walking away. I've had a lot of geese. A lot of geese. And I've had mean geese. I've been bit. They have teeth. I know it's hard to believe, but a goose has teeth. It hurts. They can draw blood. They can bruise very easily. But stand your ground. I think Nugget's a little upset that I said that he's the number two friendliest animal. So he's gonna he's gonna try to change my change my mind. Buddy, you're beautiful. I love you. But, you know, deep in the back of my mind, I do remember that you pulled my earrings out. And, you know, Mildred would never do that. Mildred's not going to pull my earrings out. All right, so I told y'all I was going to leave Mo outside the fence because he's not going to go anywhere. He's just eating grass. And here are his friends back here in this pasture. He's on the other side of the fence. 
but I have no concern. Okay, so I found the protector of the farm, and that is Miss Foxy. Uh, Foxy, she's getting on up in age. She's probably about seven, and she's a great Pyrenees. She, I woke her up from her nap, so she's not happy with me, but um, Foxy has been guarding the farm alone until the boys came. Um, Bear, Bear, our other great Pyrenees, he, um, he passed away. He was 11, and Foxy's been guarding the farm all by herself for about the past year. So, Foxy's a very important part of the farm. She's very sweet, as you can see, trying to give me the pure paw. But, um... I don't, I don't know if I would say that she's the sweetest animal on the farm. Okay, y'all, I'm approaching this big guy over here. His name's Moody, and he's a Holstein steer. And watch this. Moody! He knows his name. I don't care where I am on the farm. If I call him, he looks up. Moody's been with us. Uh, a couple of years going on. It'll be going on two years. Um, Moody is the sweetest cow. He is, he's not even full grown yet. And the vet estimates that he weighs about 1,600 pounds. He's a big old baby, but we have to be very careful when we go in with Moody because he swings his head like you just saw and he can really hurt somebody. But he's a sweetheart, aren't you boy? So I'm coming over to talk to Joe, and big baby over here is walking right beside me. And Mildred's gonna talk to me and tell me I'm not supposed to talk to any other cows but her. Joe is registered. He's been at Coghill Farm hmm, four years. And while Joe's sweet as he can be, he didn't have the best of smells. He has a tendency to want to urinate on his face so he can attract the ladies which um hmm i don't know if they find that appealing or not he's watching them as we speak but um yeah he's he, joe's a sweetheart but he's just he's he's not he's not the kind of sweetheart that you want to love on a topper on the other hand he's a nigerian dwarf buck topper has been with us for hmm six years and Topper was a bottle baby. He's very sweet. But there again, it's got that smell to him. So he can, they, the boys kind of all stay together and, and do their own thing, and you can understand why. Right, Moody? Mildred, are you jealous? Are you jealous that I went over and talked to Moody? I mean, there, there are other animals on this farm you're giving me the stink eye. There are other animals on this farm, baby. There really are. You're number one, of course. Oh, goodness. Poor Mildred. Tucker is, she's a very sweet cat. She, um, she acts more like a dog than a cat. She likes to ride on the side by side. She likes to be where we are. And she's a real people cat. But um, there's another black cat in the, at Coghill Farm. And I'm not so sure if she's not friendlier than Tucker. She's just got a whole different mindset. Okay, I just walked down to the old barn and guess who I found? This is Pink. And Pink is a very special cat. You notice the chip in her ear. A lot of you have questions about why is that there? And that's simply because Pink came from the animal shelter. In a way that the animal shelter identifies cats that have been spayed or neutered is by putting a chip in their ear. Now, um, they can see them from a distance. They know if they're feral, then they, are, they don't have to catch them because they're not gonna reproduce and cause problems. Now, Pink, we adopted from the animal shelter, and she was a bottle baby. She um, 
she and her brother lost their mother. And so there was a sweet lady that bottle fed Pink and her brother. His name was Blue. And they were calling them that already. So we just kept the name Pink. Um, they actually had a pink ribbon on her neck and a blue ribbon on the male. And the male was adopted. So um, we took Pink home with us. And she's, she's a very odd cat. What I mean by she's an odd cat is she does not come where we are. She stays down here at the barn by herself and comes up to the house at night to eat. Uh, you can see she's constantly just dripping. And she doesn't do that unless somebody's loving on her. So it, it, there's nothing wrong with her her mouth or her teeth she's done it since we first got her it's just her love um but you know while we would love for pink to come and live closer to us up at the house it's her choice and even at the old farm she would find an old tree stump or uh some place out of the way and and just she stayed there so you know we all have our differences and if that's the way she chooses to live her life so be it because she's a sweet one she just we come down here and, and we give her loving but uh she comes up to the house on her terms and we respect that no we won't try to move her to the new barn this is her home and um who knows maybe some some other black cats will come into our life because we want to help those that need help and that for the most part people don't want to adopt black cats um, superstition has it they're bad luck in some countries they're good luck so you see more black cats at the shelter than any other color but um, as for pink she's staying at the old barn okay so I'm walking back to where little Mo is and I see bandit and Rocky out here and they show him no concern whatsoever Mo you ready to go up baby Okay, I've made it to the final stop. Guess who I've got? I've got little Rocky, who's not so little anymore. Um, I hope I can make it through this without crying, but I don't know if I can or not. So, little Rocky and Bandit. came to Coghill Farm and Rocky was very sick. Rocky, um, Rocky, I knew from the get-go it wasn't good, but I have never been around nor had a dog that had Parvo. So, initially, I did not know what the problem was I knew that he was sick but I honestly thought that it may have just been a worm overload um, upon a vet visit Parvo was confirmed within minutes and Rocky wasn't the only puppy Rocky had uh, another puppy with him bandit and the vet was very concerned when Rocky's test was positive that Bandit was going to indeed get the parvovirus. Um, it was touch and go for, I don't know, at least five days. Um, Rocky and Bandit both lived in my bathroom. Goodness, buddy. And upon pretty much around the clock care, I was able to nurse Rocky back to 100% health and um, y'all, I, I told Jason this morning, I think that he is, is to his peak energy. Today, I have, I've literally seen him run more than I've, I've seen, I'm sorry, it's bouncing around, but he's, he's loving on me, but I've seen him have more energy today than I have since, since he came since he's recovered, put it to you that way, he's um he's finally I think reached his 
full recovery and he's able to keep up with his brother. Now he's about 10 pounds lighter than his brother, but who knows, he may have been the runner of the litter. Um, it may have had nothing to do with the virus at all, but it may have. But I would have to say that Rocky and his brother Bandit topped the cake for me. I think it's easy to see who the friendliest animal on this farm is. And I don't know if it's because I saved his life or if it's just his personality. But I'm so glad I have him and I'm so glad he's recovered. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing Rocky's story, um, watching these puppies grow up and just li live their best life here at Codkeel. And hopefully there's many, many more years to spend with these boys because they're not boys anymore. They've turned into men right before our, all of our eyes. And I just love them to pieces. It's not that I give Rocky any more attention than Bandit. It may seem that way. It's just he's so much more, he's so much more affectionate than his brother. He's just, he's just an in your lap kind of dog. And I have a feeling he's gonna be a hundred pound in your lap kind of dog. So because of Rocky and Bandit, we had these shirts made. Y'all have a henna tattoo, which is plant-based that Mary Carl made for me on my hand. So henna is plant-based and she is an artist. So I let her do this on my hand. So if you noticed it, that's what it is. But in honor of Rocky and Bandit, we had these shirts made. And on the front, it has the Cog Hill um, farm with the paw print with a heart in it. So this is the back and it says, uh, stay positive. And at the very bottom in little small letters, it says, love Rocky and Bandit. So those are available on our website. If you guys have followed Rocky and Bandit's story, and if you're interested in one of these t-shirts, we certainly would love for you to, to, to wear it with pride, knowing that you were pulling for these boys. So I'm not sure if you guys agreed with me on my choice of who is the friendliest or sweetest animal at Coghill Farm. No, I didn't show Gidget, I didn't show Arlo, and I didn't show Holly. Uh, Holly's Jason's dog, and while she loves me, she she's not gonna, she's not gonna love on me and sit still like she would for Jason. So, and Gidget and Arlo, they're more house dogs. So that's why I didn't show them in this video. But, um, I don't know if you guys agree with me or not on who's the who's the friendliest animal at Cog Hill Farm, but I tell you what, Rocky and Bandit sure do. They made a big impression on me. Not that the others didn't, I love them all and I love them equally. But I think as far as personality goes and the friendliest, it may be a tie between the boys, Rocky and Bandit and Mildred. Mm -hmm.